today's lecture we are going to learn about wave theory of light first is a topic which is newton's corpuscular theory there are some points which i have written here regarding newton's corpuscular theory first is he said that light emit some corpuscles when there is emission of light from suppose a light source it emits it in the form of corpuscles okay but he didn't knew the exact name what was the uh, what were the corpuscles exactly called these corpuscles he said had the property they are elastic rigid as well as weightless they don't have any weight they are elastic they have very much flexibility but they are rigid at the same time they can travel in straight line whenever we by i i see light we can feel sensations on our eyes due to this corpuscles the different lights such as red blue green they all have their colors due to having different size of corpuscles however there are certain limitations of newton's corpuscular theory is that he failed to explain reflection refraction interference diffraction polarization these terms he said that light emits corpuscles and the corpuscles travel in the straight line right then if they travel in straight line how there is reflection possible or how there is refraction and diffraction possible how the light can have polarization that means positive negative charge he failed to explain what is the cause behind this then he said that the speed of the light in denser medium is greater than rarer medium which later on was proved to be wrong by foucault also remember i told you that the light emit corpuscles so that means every time the uh, there is light ejection or emission of light mass of that object which emits the light for example a bulb it must decrease but it doesn't decrease so he failed to explain these terms these are the limitations of this theory postulates of huygens wave theory of light states that light energy is a wave form when the light is emitted from a bulb or a light source there are particles who vibrate in their mean position wherever they are just like just like if we clap someone and he uh, that person claps another one then the chain goes on so like that is how uh, the in the same way the particles vibrate in the mean position and they transfer the energy from one particle to another and there is creation of a wave light wave second in homogeneous medium velocity of wave remains constant that means the speed of the wave doesn't get affected it is running smooth and when the medium is homogeneous not changing or its temperature or density is constant so it also remains constant there is no change observed third different colors of light are due to different wavelengths as wavelength changes color also changes some uh, light may have high, higher wavelength such as red is said to have the most higher wave highest wavelength and blue color is said to have the least wavelength so that is the example that different colors of the light are due to different wavelengths next material medium is mass for propagation of light for any light to transform transfer from one place to another the material medium or the medium is necessary whether it is it is air vacuum whatever it is very necessary without it the light cannot transfer there are some merits and demerits of this theory these are just these these were just the postulates postulates means it is not 
a theory nor a law so it is just a rough study according to the theory there are merits merits of hygiene's wave theory of life which were successful in explaining reflection refraction double refraction interference and diffraction also it could explain how light conducts positive negative charge also it proved that velocity of light in rarer medium is more than the velocity of light in denser medium demerit demerit state that hygiene's wave theory of light failed to explain rectilinear propagation of light how light travels in a straight line compton effect photoelectric effect raman effect not that ye hai aashiqui ka raman raman effect it failed to explain how light can travel through vacuum it was unable to explain this phenomenon also hygiene came came up with the concept that there is a universal medium called ether around the whole universe even in vacuum which helps in conductance of light and makes the light to get transferred from one place to another through it however later on two science scientists michelson and morley proved that there is no medium named as ether and so this was a demerit wave front wave front it says that a locus of all the points of the medium to which waves reach simultaneously so that all the points are in same phase is called a wave front as you can see here see this image is here locus means it is a collection of all the points so the the collection of all where all the points they reach simultaneously see this if you see in this uh, example see this point this point they reach simultaneously and they lead in crest or trough formation so this is known as wave front wave normal it is a perpendicular drawn to the surface of a wave front at any point of a wave front so if we draw a perpendicular see these these red lines are uh, are wave front and if we draw a perpendicular line to this so just like this n dash n n double dash it is known as normal and they are all in direction of the light getting propagated wave surface by its name we know that it is a surface where the wave is reaching you can read the definition from here suppose we have a light bulb and there is a wall uh, at which the light is getting incident on so the surface it is the light is getting incident on is known as wave surface as simple as that however there are different types of wave fronts known to us in your textbook spherical wave front cylindrical wave front and plane wave front this is basic diagram and here it is a little bit 3d diagram see spherical wave front is a wave front which originates or starts from a single source at a very finite distance it can travel to a finite distance only means its limitation are set if you have a small light bulb at the center it can light up to a limit area only second is plane wave front wave front originating from point source of light at an infinite distance so here it it can travel to infinite distance this is uh, the only difference known it was plane plane wave front is for cylindrical wave front it is a wave front which originate from a slit if if i have a paper lantern suppose and i have drawn a slit here and i uh, pass light from here what will happen the light will pass on to the next corner of the cylinder so that is cylindrical wave front there are different characteristics of wave front first is the wave fronts can travel to the speed which is equal to speed of light can you imagine that it can travel to the speed equal to speed of light then second point is phase difference as you can see here see in this diagram this is our phase difference difference between two crest and crest trough and trough is known as phase difference it is 
2 pi so that means if we find out phase difference of here so it would be 4 pi and if we find out next point in this here it would be 6 pi so simultaneity of phase difference is 2 pi third is the wavefronts will only travel to forward direction it wouldn't go in backward direction no then fourth fourth quality or characteristic is that it can travel fast or slow or with different velocities in different medium Huygens principle it is the geometrical construction to determine new position of a wavefront wavefront at any instant from its position at an instant it helps in determining the position of a wavefront it has three states when in it for example take a light bulb and it is ejecting some light what will happen light will travel from a transparent medium in the waveform then this is the first wave so every point on the wavefront this is known as wavefront as we see, saw it uh, earlier every point on the wavefront will behave as if it is a secondary source of light okay then this will behave as if it is a secondary source of light then these points also will receive the light so this point will also behave as a secondary source of light they will travel in forward direction second statement third statement is the whatever the wavefront is formed is tangent to all the secondary wavelets you will see it later on what i am talking about related to tangent now we will see how we will how we can construct spherical wavefront this is an important answer see first suppose s is our source of light this is our source and there is light which is getting transferred to these points or wavefront there are five secondary wavefront there at this point this source will emit light and it will reach to these points then what will happen the light will travel in velocity c and in time t what we will do then we will construct circles i have drawn these circles with center a b c D, e. This light will extend forward more Radius of this circle is nothing but ct Velocity c and in time t Then what we will do? We will join the tangent from these side left and right of the circle and right side of the circle make sure you uh, you incorporate every circle into it properly you can what you can do is you can draw a midline then over it you can draw five circles then you can draw a uh, uh, line then both lines and join the point centers this five points and a thing but five secondary wavefront of us. This is how you will construct. For plain wavefront, what you can do? First, draw a rough line, midline. Then, take five, take okay? four points on it. A, B, C, and D. And you can erase these lines because you have you are just using it for your assistant assistance then what you can do you can construct a circle with D center this A center then second circle intersecting this circle third circle again intersecting with second fourth intersecting with third then
draw a dotted line here. Originally the midline was named PQ. You can keep it also. Then a rigid outer line. Name it as P dash Q dash. Radius of each circle would be CT. C is the velocity of the light and time T is the time uh, taken by the light to travel to this wavefront. This is the new surface of the wavefront. And this is how you, you can construct plane and spherical wavefront. Reflection at a plane surface. This is a plane wavefront and P A N Q B R are par parallel rays which are reaching to X Y which is the reflecting surface or any surface which will reflect the right light. This is the incident light and this is the reflected light. So what will happen? This incident light will reach to this reflecting surface and get reflected. Let us see how the working is. AB is the plane wavefront. Then XY is the reflecting surface. See what will happen. And from A dash and from B dash, they will start behaving as a secondary source of light and get reflected. There will be a hemisphere form from A due to A with center. See as you can see that it is a hemisphere and it will have a radius CT. What is the radius according to here? This CT. This is also a radius and from B to this point it will reach in time CT. So this is also our CT. Then there will be a reflection. What we can do is we can join this point from this point and this will become this is CD. This is tangent to the sphere. As you can see this is a tangent to this hemisphere. So this is CD tangent to hemisphere. Then there are normal drawn from this is N and from here it will be N dash. Let us start our uh, expression. Angle of incidence is equal to I and angle of reflection is equal to R. Okay, what is angle of incidence here? P A N P A dash N See P A dash N So we will write down here P A dash N Is equal to what is angle of reflection? D A dash N So this is So this is nothing but I R. Therefore, our angle D A dash C will be nothing but C D A dash C will be nothing but 90 minus R. C D this whole is 90 N A C. It it comprises of D A dash N and also D A dash C. So this will become 90 minus R. Let us take it as equation number 1. From the figure, we know that angle from figure, we know that angle D A dash C and angle 
this D A dash C an angle N A dash B dash that means this one N A dash B dash N A dash B dash and D A dash C is nothing but 90 minus I correct because I is lying outward see consider this one so, this, uh, so you will move let us take it as equation number 2 in triangle A dash B dash C dash where is the triangle A dash B dash and C dash I will construct the triangle here In triangle A dash B dash C dash and A dash D C, C dash these both triangles A dash B dash and C dash and A dash D and C I have drawn it ditto here what will happen is first of all angle of A dash B dash C dash is congruent to angle A dash D dash C dash why because both have common sides a dash and b dash c and c dash also also a dash d dash is equals to b dash c b dash c a dash d a dash d is ct or ct also and what is b dash c you know that it is CD. So both are CD. Then A dash C is equal to A dash C which is common side. So that means therefore triangle A dash B dash C dash is congruent to triangle A dash D dash C dash which can be also written as therefore angle B B dash A dash C is congruent to angle A dash C D C dash D corresponding corresponding angle of corresponding triangles B and A B and A both are corresponding angles of corresponding triangles this B A C it is nothing but I. Then what is C? It is nothing but R. This has foot of I. So here this and this will be I. And this and this will be R. C is R. And A is I. Angle A is I. Correct? And angle C would be R. As you have seen here. So that means angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection.